So, uh, good evening, uh, students. Uh, today, we're going to discuss some OSCE questions on arthroplasty. Uh, we'll, uh, we can do it uh, in an interactive session. Uh, we can discuss. I can have one of you guys start off with a discussion, and then I can join and give you the tips. Would that be okay? Yes, definitely, sir. So, so, so students, uh, those who want to participate, I think you can raise your hands so that I can convey. Do we have a volunteer right now? Any volunteer? Okay. So, Anshpal so Singh is resident. Right. So, Anshpal Singh. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a question for you. You can start off with this question and we'll take it off uh, with this. Uh, questions. Uh, identify the type of PHR design on the left side. List the components of this design. Identify the structure marked with arrows and describe the sign and name the complication of left PHR. Uh, so the first question, uh, type of PHR design on the left side, it is a uh, uncemented kind of an implant. So can you uh, go in further details, which uncemented exactly? How uh, is uh, the right side different from the left side? Side. In terms of uh, that, I don't know, sir. Look carefully. Look at the insert. Look at the shell. Focus on the shell part. Mm. I can see on the right side. Uh, mother, the is an unconstrained. Focus here. Focus yeah. So this is a standard THR, right? On the right side. Yeah. So yes, sir. If we have a polyliner, this is slightly translucent, right? Right. But in this case, it is all opaque. So it's a metal liner. Okay. So does that give you any hint? Which kind of design are you talking about? Uh, sir, dual mobility? Yes. So it's a dual mobility design with a metal liner there. Okay, sir. So what are the components of the design? Uh... So there is a acetabular shell, then mm -hmm. there is a liner in between that, the metal liner and metal liner. The, the poly liner and then the head which articulates with the liner. Perfect. So what is the special point about dual mobility? Uh, so the uh, movement happens in two on two surfaces. One being the posterior aspect of the liner and then the shell and the head and the shell, uh, head and the liner. Okay. So how does it help? Uh, it offers a, a better ROM. Well, uh, the ROM is better. Before, uh, the limits uh, where the impingement will occur, uh, it uh, increases that limit and hence decreases the uh, risk of dislocation. When the impingement starts at the first uh, interface, then the second interface comes into play and the ROM is increased. So, impingement ROM, ROM is increased in this with yes. the decreased risk of location. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, then there is a uh, structure marked with three arrows. So, what is that? Structure mm -hmm. marked with three arrows. On the left side. Mm -hmm. I can't make anything out over there, sir. Just describe what, what you can see. Uh, there is a structure which is outlined by three arrows. Mm -hmm. This is a circular uh, kind of hemispherical, hemispherical structure. structure. Which is uh, decreased lucency and which is radio, uh, which is translucent, I would say, uh, not radio and decreased lucent and uh, decreased opacity from the uh, surrounding structures. So, what can this be? Can be the false acetabulum where the hip might have been articulating before. This can be the uh, the polyliner, correct? Okay, okay, sir. This is a uh, this is a very typical thing uh, which is seen only in dual mobility called intra prosthetic dislocation. Right, right, sir. So in this, the poly liner dislocates, okay. while the metal liner remains in the established shell. 
so if you see music in this established shell you can matlab imagine that the metal liner is slightly eccentric is yes, slightly towards so right the center. proximal end the center center is slightly eccentric right sir right so this is because there is a small head liner in a bigger shell so it's located it's kind of uh, shifted to a, a one center shifted superiorly because of the dislocation of this uh, uh, poly liner okay right sir and this sign is called no i don't know sir it's called a double bubble sign okay okay so you see the two bubble it's a double bubble sign and this is a classical sign for uh, intra static dislocation okay so okay. this is what you need to know about uh, uh, door mobility okay Let's so we'll take the next question then any, any takers should i pick up uh, a volunteer or is anybody uh, so can i uh, uh please go ahead Uh, uh, sir, yes, sir. Sir, I am uh, Sahil uh, Sohi. Sure, go ahead, Sahil. Uh, yes, sir. So, classification system for femur bone classification is a DORS classification, in which we have yeah. three, three. Uh, sir, DORS classification. Uh mm huh. -hmm. In which we have three types: type A, uh, in which the cortex is thicker, and there is a uh, medullary uh, cortex is thicker than the medullary cavity. in type b there is a, a, a thinning of cortex has started and in type c the cortex is very thin and there is large uh, medullary cavity so the name given uh, for this kind of femur stem is sir this is dors type c because cortex is very thin and medullary canal is large which type of fixation for the femur stem would you use for this patient sir we would use cemented tlr give a name for complete Sorry? the question second uh, second question what is the name given to this femur stem it is sir, a dor, dor c type accepted dor type what is c the name sir. given stove pipe stove pipe okay there is a name okay stove so, pipe stove okay. pipe go ahead and hmm. type of fixation for this stem would be cemented femur we will use cemented femur stem Mm -hmm. canal ratio uh, uh, canal ratio is uh, i don't know exactly and any guesses so ratio of canal uh, length at the isthmus uh, divided by ratio of canal length at the uh, mid uh, midpoint of the femur shaft they will be similar right so So, isthmus and midpoint shaft will be pretty much same. You are about there. Just try something else. Okay. We'll go ahead. We'll go ahead. I'll tell you. Next, next question. In classification system, to classify the quality of cementing, I don't know, sir. Okay. So, uh, you you answered the first question right. It's a DOS classification. So, DOS classification, as we know, is uh, three types. A, B, and C. A will be a champagne glass appearance where, with a very uh, tight uh, uh, canal uh, at the isthmic region or in the diaphyseal region and a normal uh, wide metaphyseal region. As we go from door A to door C, the canal in this region, in the diaphyseal region, will become wider. So this uh, ratio comes into picture. is called canal ratio which is a ratio of the inner diameter at a point 10 cm from the lesser trochanter divided by the inner diameter at the lesser trochanter level so it is a ratio less than 0.5 which means if this is a very small diameter which is a tight canal that will be a door a as this canal becomes wider the ratio will become larger so type b will be 0.5 to 0.75 in type b it is a dealer's choice you can use cemented or non cemented depending on the kind of fit you are getting 
but type c will always be a very wide patent canal for which you'll always choose a cemented stem so type a is always uncemented type b is surgeon's preference type c canal will always be cemented so the typical name given to type c canals is stove pipe appearance you answered correctly that we will do a cemented stem in this and then uh, we have answered about the canal ratio